Being October, with the sun-filled evenings drawing to a close for the year and Ellie's birthday only a few days away, we thought we'd go and explore one of the UK's most beautiful and historically rich areas, the Cotswolds. It was not only an excuse to get out after a long time stuck in our local area due to work and lockdowns, but also a chance to air out the Foxwing awning for the truck, something I've had for ages and only used a handful of times whilst not filming due to the recent situation. We'd hired a beautiful cottage from Airbnb, located just that bit more tucked away in a peaceful village of Western Subedge, where we could enjoy the open space, visit local areas, and importantly, rest. So we're just going for a little walk. There's the little cottage that we've booked for a few days. Got the truck with its awning. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be awesome. There's a few sheep over here we're gonna go have a little look at. Um, yeah, I'll probably start putting a few more of these kind of little vloggy kind of journey things on my Primal Nomad. Um, when I recovered my hard drive that I lost loads of footage on, um, I actually managed to recover a trip of me down in, uh, or sorry, up in the Yorkshire Dales ages ago for New Year's. So I'm gonna edit that together and uh, yeah, share it with you guys because there's some beautiful views and really nice locations to share. So nice here, uh, really peaceful guys. Western Subedge was mentioned in the Doomsday Books 1085 and hosted the Cotswolds Olympics, traditionally including events such as shin kicking, morris dancing, tug of war and even sword fighting events, all hosted around a temporary wooden castle that used to be constructed called Dover Castle and started as early back as 1612. So just going for a little walk in the evening, going to visit a local church and he was just pointing out there's a hedgerow full of hawthorn berries and blackberries. What's that? Really? Yeah, they're a little bit behind here, eh? Very behind. That's amazing. We should collect some. Loads of elderberries, really good. That's awesome. So there's loads of beautiful yew trees here, guys. I was just explaining to Ali, they're kind of like a tree of the dead. Normally grow a lot in graveyards. And talking about graveyards, I might be a little bit old fashioned, but it's probably one of the only times you've seen me without my cap on. Something I was raised to do, out of respect for the dead. Really nice church here. I'd imagine it's like Norman or something like that. But really, really beautiful. Big gothic arches. Got gargoyles up at the top there as well. And the resident crows. I love old stonework on churches because you can see all the mason's marks, all the chisel marks. Really, really pretty. You can see it all along the wall there, all the basting marks. That's where the chisel was drawn along the face just to bring it to a square surface. It's absolutely gorgeous here with the sun setting. So that's where we are right over there. That's Cherry Barn. Really nice location in the Cotswolds. This impressive church dedicated to St. John the Baptist and St. Lawrence was constructed in the 13th century and despite some restoration it's still in its original style. So these gravestones, I think, are from 1711, which is really, really old, really ancient. And the sun setting right behind there is just beautiful. So there's a gargoyle right up at the top there. Awesome face on it. Really cool to see the carving of like the medieval craftsman. 
When built by Godfrey Gifford, Bishop of Worcester, it was originally partnered with a castle and moat that was later sacked in the Civil War and the stones used to build the village boundary walls itself. So I put these little reverse lights on and it's been a, a godsend because the normal reversing lights are awful. After exploring the local village, we settled in for the evening with some home cooking and a few drinks ready for the next day. So it's a bit of a wet day today, um, but nevertheless, it's gonna be really exciting. We're just gonna explore a few areas, probably Tewkesbury, which is a medieval uh, village. And uh, yeah, should have some really nice buildings and sites to see. I've got the Ridgeline Pintail smock on. It's one of my favorite jackets, actually. Um, and it complements the expedition backpack, um, expedition units backpack which is fully waterproof and perfect for days like this so I can keep all my gear in it and know that'll be nice and dry. I'm gonna be doing a nice walk tomorrow through some really nice wooded and hilled areas so I'll bring you along for that. So we've just come to a little pottery shop because Ellie's really into her pottery. So yeah, looking forward to seeing this one. Toth Millway. So guys, um, yeah, here in Toth Millway's pottery shop and it's absolutely gorgeous. Though um, he fires all salt glazing, which is really traditional for this kind of area, uh, really English. And his pottery is amazing. Definitely come in here. He's a lovely chap and uh, yeah, just wonderful to talk to. Been learning all about the salt glazing, which is really interesting to me because of my brickwork, obviously. Um, but yeah, really nice. I'm going to pick up a few pieces here. This really nice mug. Lovely salt glaze on that. And a tiny little tea light holder with a lovely kind of crackly glaze inside. Gorgeous. But what you need to see, I've just emptied the room to concrete the floor. You see at the sides is where the burners have just the, the attrition of salt and flame eating into the brickwork. So that the inner skin, just at about this level, just above the bag wall, is now down to about less than two inches. It's probably an inch and a half of inner skin. There's another four and a half inches of exactly the same brick mm -hmm. on the outside because I am simple. I make the inside and the outside the same brick Brilliant. because they'll be the same size. Mm -hmm. When you make yeah. them out of two different bricks, they're always different sizes. Oh, well, <laughs> Even these machine cut bricks. Mm -hmm. The grit, every bit of it fuses and it gets solid. Yeah. Yeah. And all the walls bulge until they all crack apart yeah. and start making. We moved from Toff Millway's incredible workshop to Tewkesbury and spent time browsing local book and gift shops before heading to Tewkesbury Abbey of Norman construction dating back to 1121. Its impressive architectural features and stained glass windows were incorporated in the later 14th century, but still adorn the building and leave only more questions to me, a 21st century mason, about the logistics of its construction in only the 19 years it took to build. This was a great way to spend a fairly wet but relaxing day before heading back to the cottage for an English breakfast for tea and an evening sat relaxing by the fire. So we've just been going through the OS map. We're going to be heading from Broadway to Broadway Tower. It's part of the Cotswolds Way. Um, unfortunately we're not here long enough to warrant doing too much more but it's going to be good to explore the area. So just got the compass out, set our bearing and we'll use that to just navigate 
through some of the nice terrain. Might be a little bit wet, but we should be good. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. It's a little bit wet today and windy, and my Osmo camera actually stopped working, so need to have a look at that and see what's happened. A bit annoying, but got the expedition unit's backpack on, it's keeping everything nice and dry. And that isn't the issue that happened with the Osmo. It's the charger port, it was on charge, and sometimes when you disconnect it, it won't turn on, unless you do it when it's on charge at first. Um, but yeah, just walking from Broadway to Broadway Tower. Lovely walk. Um, like I said, a bit wet, but absolutely loving it. So there's the tower, guys. As usual, bloody wrapped in scaffold. Typical. Oh well, worth the walk. So I finally got the Osmo Pocket working again, temporarily I think. Um, it's just not holding charge, or it is, and then it's just not turning on, so uh, very strange. But nevertheless, here's to uh, hoping it works. Um, so we went to Broadway Tower, that was unfortunately scaffolded, so it's kind of like, yeah, just like being back at work really. Nice to see it getting restored. Um, but no, we're about to go for a little walk um, around Chipping Camden, and uh, yeah, to see the area. There's a kind of cool museum there all about kind of handicrafts and stuff, so I'll uh, make sure to bring you guys there. After leaving Broadway, we made our way to Chipping Camden, closer to our cottage, and steeped with Roman history, with its still intact market square and traditionally built stone and brick buildings. There's this tiny little gateway into a memorial garden. The archway is amazing, really beautiful, really cute. I have to duck my head going through here. So when you're in an arboretum and you see a tree peeling, it's always worth taking a few shavings rather than it going to waste. So this is an Acer Chryseum, um, Chinese origin, but very similar to birch bark actually, guys. We made our way through the cobbled streets to the small but interesting agricultural museum and then next door to St. James's Church. Dating from the 14th century, it's one of the finest wool churches in England, testament to the wealth of local wool merchants in the medieval period. The earliest church on this site was erected in the Norman period, sometime before 1180, and it still hosts the tomb of Sir Thomas Smith, dated 1593. After visiting the memorial garden, we found an amazing wine merchant and deli where we could get our evening's ready meal, freshly made with local ingredients and packaged to heat later. Something special for Ellie's birthday meal with little effort to be made on both of our parts after a long day. So we're up on a national park landmark, Dover's Hill or Dover's Hill. Really nice viewpoint, There's loads of sheep around. Just a nice little walk and it's uh, right next to a wood called Lynch's Wood which of course is my surname, so uh, yeah, absolutely awesome. After reaching the vantage point on Dover's Hill, it's apparent why it was chosen to host the games and to be the start and or finish of the iconic Cotswolds Way walk. The views and scenery are breathtaking, surrounded by woodland that is claimed to be the terrace sides of an old Roman fortress and the evident medieval ridge and furrow visible in the adjoining fields. So it's our last night, guys. Probably just see there's a pheasant just about there. Got the northern monk. And uh, going to collect some elderberries because Ellie wants some to make some cordial or some uh, wine. So we've got four bags full of elderberries. May freeze them just for the journey home, but we'll see. Uh, it'd be good for Ellie to make some cordial or something out of this. So got some really nice food from Tokes in Chipping Camden. Um, yeah, freezer meals that are all made on the premises. They've got some really nice wines, cheeses and beers. 
cracking into this soon, but first we're going to start on a wine for Ellie's birthday. So it's an absolutely lovely morning, the day we're going to leave, which is typical, but we're going to head to Chipping Norton now. So you're going to be going to the Roll Wright Stones, which is a stone circle in Chipping Norton. Um, really awesome, and then uh, hopefully to the Diddley Squat Farm, and then Sirencester. We're actually here at the Roll Wright Stones um, here in the Cotswold. It's amazing. It's got about 2,000 years of Neolithic and early Bronze Age history, and it's really amazing. Supposedly, the legends say that there's uncountable bodies of the legendary men that lay here. So, um, yeah, really inspiring. There's a really nice totem here in the middle, and there's actually a guy here playing a pipe which is amazing so it was really cool to walk in and kind of have this eerie feeling um, but yeah definitely one to come and see so i'm just looking at a sign guys and the roll right stones consist of three monuments uh, the whispering knight's burial chamber the king's men stone circle and the king's stone which is a standing stone which dates back to uh, 3,800 to 1,500 BC. And the ceremonial stone circle is about 2,500 BC. So absolutely amazing. Uh, we're just going to go and take a look at the other parts now, just being at the circle. So uh, amazing standing stones here, guys. Really, really nice. You can see other people have left some offerings in there. And I'm just going to do the same. Seeing others having made offerings and not wanting to erode the stones further by throwing metal coins onto these historical icons, I chose to forage for some hawthorn, elderberries and sloes to pay my respects with. I'm sure our ancestors can appreciate the importance of seasonal foods which they were so intimately dependent on at the times of these stones placement. really lucky to have these standing stones here in England. Big part of our history, there's one right behind me here, the King's Stone, and the views here are just incredible, looking around here. Just amazing. Um, yeah, well worth coming and checking out. So Diddley Squat Farm was a no-go, uh, really busy, probably like 100, 200 people there in a queue and it was absolutely pelting it down so we were like no way we'll do that next time. So we're just on our way to Sirencester to do a few museums, look at the Roman Amphitheatre. Um, so yeah, I think it's the Carinium Museum and it should be awesome. So a really cool farm shop, getting some smoked garlic and they got some chanterelles here, really awesome. Haven't found any wild, but might have to pick some of these up. I'm in heaven, guys. So many different craft ales here with the Upton Brewery. So I'll probably have to get one or two of theirs and uh, see what other ones it got. So what one are you going for? 
What was it again that you said we were going for? A farmhouse sizzle, which farmhouse actually is the only one not on there. No worries. This is um, Brewer's creation. Oh, brilliant. There you go. How is it, Ellie? Beautiful. Farmhouse sizzle. <laughs> So that was Upton Firehouse, guys. There's a smokery here, a brewery, and a distillery. Really worth checking out. We're in Siren's Hester, about to go to the Corinthian Museum. Ellie loves all her ancient history, so yeah, it's gonna be awesome. There's a good church here, and we'll see. The Corinium Museum really grabbed my attention straight off of the bat with its newly opened prehistory exhibition with artifacts, reconstructions and visual demonstrations of techniques dating back from the Stone Age. Having toyed around with flint myself, it was like being in Aladdin's cave. To see all of the different progression of workmanship throughout the age all the way to early Bronze Age was fascinating. Ellie, being so well educated on ancient Greek and Roman history, was a perfect guide and partner to walk around the majority of the museum with, explaining what certain Latin phrases or motifs meant to the Roman occupiers of Britain, and sharing her vast wealth of knowledge about the art and history of these people. The sheer amount of mosaics saved by this establishment is beyond words, and I highly implore that you all go and visit at some point. After visiting all of the exhibitions, we explored the town of Sirencester before making our way back to the car for the reluctant journey home. So guys, um, all finished now with the Cotswold trip. We had a really good time at the Corinium Museum, really worthwhile going out. I know there's not been a lot of bushcraft or really overlandy stuff on this one, just the elderberry picking and some really cool views, Neolithic sites, etc. But I hope you've enjoyed and yeah, definitely check out the Cotswolds. We'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.